From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Mountain lion sightings in town will tell you exactly where the big cats are on the prowl. It was not afraid of me at all. Plus, a local therapist is helping patients with play and a pup. The little guys that I have that have lots and lots of trauma and really difficult time developing relationships oftentimes can develop a relationship with him. And finally, some good news for the Montana victims of the massive Arizona Medicaid scam. Good morning and welcome to Montana this morning on this Tuesday, August 8th. I'm Augusta McDonald. We begin right here in Billings where the victim of a brutal surprise attack is asking Heights residents to check their security cameras. A woman who works at the Edgewood Vista Memory Care Facility was taking out the trash at work Sunday night when she was chased and hit in the face by two unidentified women. She said they were trying to stab her and the attack only ended when a co-worker stepped outside. The woman did not want us to share her identity, but police corroborate her story. She's hoping someone living near Wicks Lane might have caught the attackers on video. At first, I was thinking it was random, but they didn't steal anything. I still had my keys, phone, ring, watch, everything, so they didn't try to steal from me. So that's how I think it wasn't random. The attack happened right in between Edgewood Vista and 3G's. Neither business has outdoor cameras. With mountain lion sightings in both Lockwood and Edgar over the weekend, our Q2's Haley Monaco is looking into what Montana wildlife officials do when these big cats come too close. This is the Lockwood neighborhood where one mountain lion was recently shot and killed. Now neighbors tell me it was actually shot first in a tree a bit further down and then ran into the neighborhood. Officials tracked it here and then shot it in front of someone's home. This quiet street had quite the day Saturday when a mountain lion was euthanized by game wardens. This photo shows just how close it ended up to a home. So the problem that we see is these cats are getting so used to humanity. According to Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks, residents in the area had reported seeing the animal multiple times over the last week. The animal was reportedly in poor physical condition and was showing dangerous and bold behavior, such as hunting during the day. According to state policy, relocating mountain lions is prohibited because of the many failed attempts to relocate in the past. If you relocate them, they come back. And that's not the only community dealing with mountain lion mayhem. Here in the small town of Edgar, one man is claiming there's a new resident in town, a mountain lion terrorizing his property and killing his livestock. And I'm afraid for the dog. It was not afraid of me at all or of a running lawnmower. Nev Harding says he and his 12 year old Great Dane have seen the mountain lion many times. Standing right in front of me was a, a mountain lion broadside just looking at me. Luckily, his dog was able to scare it off that time, but Harding claims something has killed three of his roosters and 13 chickens. If it was totally removed, I wouldn't have a problem. Harding says he has reached out to FWP and Billings, but was directed to Helena. FWP and Billings tells MTN it hasn't received any reports of mountain lions in the Edgar area. But mountain lions are common here in Billings and beyond, and with activity on the rise, many from Lockwood to Edgar are on high alert. In Edgar, Haley Monaco, MTN News. Thank you, Haley, and we'll of course continue to follow those stories. Very scary when those big cats come into town. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, very, <laughs> makes you a bit nervous. It but does a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course they don't want to be around people. Yeah. You know, they try to run away, but anyway, uh, we had some rain yesterday. We did. And what are we looking forward to later this week? Well, we, let, well let's take a step back in time. Uh, the rain that you speak of yesterday, uh, we got uh, two tenths of an inch of rain at the airport. It's cooler than average, uh, 77 for the high. We're going to start to see some 80s today. Uh, we're looking pretty good now in terms of the month. Yeah, we're just slightly above average by a little bit. Of course, the year we're pacing ahead. We could see some rain here in Billings later today and this evening. A very very, very slight chance like yesterday uh, if you are south of Yellowstone County, northern parts of Wyoming, uh, a good chance really around the mountains and the foothills where we have a, a better shot of seeing some of that rainfall. Now saying that, we could see maybe Thursday morning our best chance of some rain here in Billings, but it may come through when a lot of us are asleep. And I'll, I'll tell you why that's the case coming up in just a bit. 56 right now here at the airport. Feels really good out there. Winds out southwest at about 9 miles an hour. Some temperatures across the area, 54 in Roundup, 53 in Columbus, 55 in Hardin, where we have some cloud cover. And you can see the clouds down to our south. That's because of that area of low pressure that's going to give us a chance of rain there. 56 right now in Mile City. 
as well as Cody, and we've got 57 currently in Grable. So we'll see 70s and 80s today, maybe some 90s tomorrow, and then a bit of a cool down with this cold front coming through. That could give us our chance of rain here on Billings. We'll take a look at that and more coming up here in just a bit. Okay, Miller, thank you so much. Help is on the way for Montana Native Americans caught up in a massive Arizona Medicaid scam. Indian Health Services in Billings wants to send victims to legitimate inpatient facilities right here in Montana. Hundreds of tribal members from our state were lured to Arizona by unlicensed sober living homes there with the promise of free housing and recovery. Instead, fraudsters collected Medicaid money, provided no tools for recovery, and in some cases supplied addicts with dangerous drugs in order to keep their beds full and their scheme alive. They were also kicking people out on the streets of Phoenix that week that it was uh, very, very hot. So definitely a scary situation for a lot of tribal members who were recruited for these treatment homes. If you're a victim and a Montana tribal member, Billings Area Indian Health Service wants you to reach out to Director of Tribal Programs Jennifer Lemire or Chief Medical Officer Dr. Steve Williamson. Right here on the screen, we've provided their contact information and you can also find this at ktvq.com. There's also a new scam target, targeting veterans, and it's coming just as tomorrow's deadline approaches to get back payments through the PACT Act. The PACT Act expands benefits to more than 5 million veterans affected by burn pits, Agent Orange, and other toxic substances while on duty. Those who apply before August 9th are eligible for back pay going to um, August of 2022 when this piece of legislation was signed. This morning, the AARP is trying to get the word out about scammers that are falsely offering to help vets with the application process. Scammers know that it's a it's a tight knit structure of, of veterans. You know we have our own language, and if they can they can get trust there, they can scam uh, veterans by ut utilizing military jargon. You know by saying that you can pay for your your pay for your service benefits. Experts recommend using AARP.org slash veterans for helpful resources on where to get started. And you can also scan the QR code on your screen now to take you to the AARP website. And if you want to sign up for PACT Act benefits, contact the local VA. And in national news, a hearing is coming to decide whether a protective order will be put in place in the special counsel's 2020 election case against Donald Trump. Yesterday, Trump's legal team argued in a court filing that prosecutors proposed protective order uh, aimed at preventing the public disclosure, disclosure of evidence is too broad and would restrict his First Amendment rights. Special counsel Jack Smith fired back, urging the, Trump, uh, urging the judge to reject the Trump defense's proposed changes. The judge directed attorneys for both sides to meet today to find a time for that hearing. More interest rate hikes could be coming soon. Federal Reserve officials say additional increases will likely be needed to lower inflation. The rate has gone down for 12 straight months, but the Fed's goal is to bring inflation down to 2%. The board will meet again next month to decide whether to raise interest rates again. Another key piece of President Biden's student debt relief agenda has run into a legal roadblock. A federal appeals court prevented a rule from taking effect that would have made it easier for people defrauded by schools to have their loans forgiven. The Education Department enacted the rule last year. A group representing for-profit schools sued to block it. The rule will remain on hold while the legal process plays out. And across the country, the summer of severe weather hasn't let up. Thunderstorms and possible tornadoes turned deadly as the system brought heavy rain and strong winds to the East Coast. At least two people are confirmed dead. One person hit by lightning in Alabama. Another killed when a tree fell on them in South Carolina. CBS's Jared Hill has the latest. Wild weather walloped the country from Indiana to Maryland. Outside of Baltimore, a huge tree sliced through the home of a couple in their 70s. Their son, grateful, both made it out with just minor injuries. Probably would have been killed. Um, like I said, somebody was looking out for them, and I'm, I'm glad they did. In Tennessee, strong winds ripped roofs off this apartment complex near Knoxville. Hundreds forced to find somewhere else to stay. My power flickered, and at that point, you know, I just grabbed him and we got in the bathtub. At one point along the East Coast, nearly a million people were without power Monday night. In West Virginia, storms dropped hail the size of golf balls. This is really bad. And enough rain to turn roads into flood zones. At Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson Airport, long lines as storms forced ground stops along the East Coast. According to FlightAware, 
More than 8,000 flights were delayed, 1,700 canceled Monday. Bags had already been checked. I still at this point do not have my checked bags. While the east dries out from the rain, this summer's stretch of scorching heat turned forests into firewood in Johnson County, Texas. The heat index in the triple digits adding another layer of danger for firefighters. They may only be able to work for 15 minutes before they have to go cool off. Another punch as a summer of severe weather continues to wreak havoc. Jared Hill, CBS News, New York. While some flight cancellations and delays are still posted for today, numbers are much closer to normal, according to Flight Aware. A Miles City hate crime investigation we told you about last week is now over. Two juveniles turned themselves in, telling police they destroyed United Christian Church's pride flag and left that anti-LGBTQ message over the church's sign. Miles City police say because the individuals are minors, they will not be identified. It's unknown if any charges will be filed. A dog can be a pet and a best friend. And in one special case here in Billings, a certified medical assistant. q 2 Zelina Howder introduces us to a working canine helping a therapist understand her youngest patients. This is Theo. Him and his owner Karen Bow make the only certified animal assisted play therapy team in the state. It's a unique approach that's making a big impact in the lives of kids. <laughs> Unlike most pups, Theo the dog has a job. Sit. Aww. He's a canine counselor helping kids like nine year old Taylor Asbell through play therapy. I get to like make stuff with her, like, like slime, or, or I get to like play, play, play with Theo and, and, and go to the um, park. Younger kids don't have the cognitive ability to explain how they're feeling, which is where play therapy comes in. Yeah. The idea is that the items or the toys are their words. And so, you know, you create a space for that with all the things around here that you see, and then you just let them play out the process. Karen Bow with Kid Counseling Montana says play therapy isn't new. Do you like broccoli? But what she offers with Theo is something you won't find anywhere else in state. No. A lot of the little guys that I have that have lots and lots of trauma and really difficult time developing relationships oftentimes can develop a relationship with him versus with other people. And it really does help reduce their behaviors and helps them in school. Karen and Theo helped Taylor with her own trauma after this school bus accident in Lockwood last winter. You may remember the story on our airwaves. She was on the bus when it happened. The, the bus slid off and thankfully nobody was hurt, but the bus tipped over. She f had some real strong anxieties about getting back on a, on a school bus. With Theo's help, Karen used play therapy to help Taylor get past her fears of entering a vehicle. He like wants me to, to like pet him and I, and I pet him. Kind of helps her calm down. Karen, like I'm gonna explain it in like, um, in a way that, that, that I can understand it so, so, so she could help me, um, get, get through that. And it's something Karen wouldn't have any other way. I get to come and play every day with my dog. It's great. And we help people. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Great story. Thank you, Alina. And just like Theo, you have a chance to make a difference in the lives of local kids. With school starting soon here at Q2, along with the Scripps Howard Foundation, are ramping up for our Give a Child a Book campaign. With help from your donations, we're giving free books to the kids who need them most. In partnership with Scholastic, Q2 puts on book fairs at schools across the region. It means students get to choose which books they take home. And when kids pick which books they get to read, it's proven to correlate with higher scores on comprehension tests. If you want to help us reach as many schools as possible, head to ktvq.com book to donate today.